Alright, what's happening y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street School. It's coming with a quick video. Just want to discuss the possibilities of Alex Smith starting in 2021 for us. Also, the possibilities of Dwayne Haskins starting at some point in 2020 for us. Jay Wright says something else about the name. Not big news. Nothing really telling, but want to mention what he said. And also, another Washington starter added to the IR. Let's get it. Alright, so first of all, main attraction of this report, Ron Rivera spoke about Alex Smith possibly being the starting QB for 2021. Not just the remainder of this season, but next season also. There's a lot of factors to play into this, because who knows what happens next year after free agency, after the draft, but as of right now, it is not impossible for Alex Smith to be our starting quarterback going into next season. But you do have to remember he is 36 years old and will be 37 by the time the next season starts, the 2021 season. And if you truly believe that Alex Smith could possibly start for us 2021, that means that you believe that this team is definitely in win now mode. And with us having the third overall pick in the draft right now, I'm not inclined to say that we are in win now mode. But again, who knows after free agency if we would address offensive line, address receiver, address tight end, safety, all of that through the draft. Find some gems again in the third round or later. It seems like the third and the fifth rounds have been sweet spots for Kyle Smith. Even the sixth round, kind of. So who knows? And my opinion on it is that I don't want Alex Smith starting for us unless we took a quarterback top five in this upcoming draft and he's learning behind Alex Smith. No matter what the scenario is, I want a quarterback drafted in the top five. And you can go ahead and start, say, a Justin Fields, Trey Lance, or a Zach Wilson day one. Or he can sit behind Alex Smith for a few games, maybe up to the bye week, like how Tua Tagovailoa entered the starting lineup. Or sit behind him an entire year and become the starting quarterback for the 2022 season. And we just never look back. And we have the QB of our dreams for the next 10 to 15 years. Or even when we were winning Super Bowls, we didn't have franchise quarterbacks that stayed with us for 15 years plus and turned us into a dynasty like how Tom Brady did for the Patriots, Peyton Manning did for the Colts, how Russell Wilson will be for the Seahawks, Aaron Rodgers for the Packers. You know, quarterbacks that stick around for 10 plus years and constantly keeps their team in Super Bowl contention. And at the very least as a playoff team. Because my thing is with Alex Smith, that Lions game is the best game Alex Smith has ever had in the burgundy and gold, period. The best game he's ever had. We know him as a dink and dunker, and even though he was dinking and dunking a little bit against the Lions, he still made intermediate throws when necessary. And since when has Alex Smith had two back-to-back 300-yard -back games? I know he was not doing that for us the 2018 season when we were 6-3 and three and leading the division before we got hit with one of the worst injury bugs in NFL history. So... Alex Smith gave us his best game I've ever seen him play for the Burgundy and Gold. And we still lost to the Lions. It wasn't even like the Ravens, the Cardinals, the Steelers, the Seahawks, the Packers, the Chiefs, the Raiders, any of these other great teams out here. It was the Lions. With a hurt Matthew Stafford, who was hurt, who had an injury to his throwing hand mid-game and still came in the game and won us the game. Now, of course, all of it's not Alex Smith's fault at all. But it's hard to say we're in win-now mode when Alex Smith gave us the best game I've seen him play in the Burgundy and Gold and we still lost. So even if Alex Smith is just on average slightly not as good as he was against the Lions, then we're just expecting the rest of our team to just be way better than they are now and can help Alex Smith win these games. And I just don't see that happening. We need a quarterback with higher potential, better playmaking ability, far more mobility, stronger arm to at least keep the safeties honest because safeties play up against us since Kyle Allen and Alex Smith have been into the game and Dwayne Haskins even because Dwayne Haskins has a rocket arm but he didn't know Scott Turner's offense enough for Scott Turner to even open up the playbook to start throwing it deep and when Dwayne Haskins was in the lineup our offensive line was terrible but now even though our offensive line is playing better now we have quarterbacks in there that don't have a rocket arm to keep safeties honest and they're just playing up so now it's hard for us to gain yards and points and also without a rocket arm QB or at least something better than what Alex Smith and Kyle Allen bring it's hard to win games you have to have explosive plays these 60 yard drives that we put together and then just end up kicking a field goal or having a turnover is not how you win games it's really hard to have 70 yard drives consistently 
throughout the game and every game. A lot of these teams that are winning are having more explosive plays than us. We can't win with just these 15-yard, 20-yard passes being our biggest plays of the game. You have to be an absolute genius to be able to consistently put together 50 to 80-yard drives throughout a game. That's just not realistic. Not even the best offenses do that. And the offenses that do it more often have quarterbacks that are very mobile and can make plays on their feet, whether they get the first down themselves with their legs or they move out and throw and make a play off schedule. We don't have that right now. A quarterback in this draft gives us that. Also, as far as Dwayne Haskins goes, Ron Rivera did say that Dwayne Haskins has a possibility of playing this year if we are eliminated from playoff contention. Who knows when that will ever happen because, I mean, it looks like we may beat the Bengals, which will give us one more win. And then the Eagles, Cowboys, and Giants all look bad. Right now, the Giants look like the best team in the division with only three wins. They swept us and they just beat the Eagles. So who knows what's going to happen? And I just can't see us being eliminated from playoff contention until probably like the last two weeks of the season because we all suck and it's always going to be neck and neck the whole way through from first to fourth place everybody who would be playoff contenders just off of the fact that this division is the worst division statistically ever since the merger we literally have the worst division ever we are the true definition of the nfc least and i'm in the club that winning this division is extremely pointless there's no pride you take from winning in the worst division in nfl history and then going into the playoffs and losing to the packers or seahawks or whoever 40 to 10 like there's just no reason now you're picking in the 20s picking behind teams with 11 10 wins 9 wins 8 wins because you messed up and won the worst division in nfl history so I mean, it would be interesting to see what Dwayne Haskins can do because you're never going to get any trade value for him being on the bench. You ruined this trade value by putting him on the bench. The only way you can raise it up even a little bit is to let him go out there and show some potential on the field. But if we're never going to play him, Unless Alex Smith gets hurt, which I never wish on him. I hope that does not happen. His wife has already been through so much. He's been through so much. Their whole family, everybody has been through so much. I don't wish that. Or we lose playoff contention possibility. And that's just not going to happen. Unless the Giants, Cowboys, or Eagles just go on a mean win streak. I doubt that happens. Also, Jason Wright, team president, gave another update on the name. Basically just saying again that this may end up being our permanent name. You never know. Nothing concrete. But it was reported. I wanted to give that to y'all. And also, Jerron Christian, our starting left tackle, for most of the season, has now been placed on IR. And it's sad because, I mean, he wasn't great, but he also wasn't terrible. He would give up that one huge play every game, like a strip sack or something. But overall, he was not terrible. And Cornelius Lucas luckily stepped up in his spot and played really well. But now he's also hurt. So we have to go into the Bengals game with David Sharp and Morgan Moses. It's dark. I love Morgan Moses, and he held it down at left tackle, but he's better at right tackle. And that lets you know how bad David Sharp is, that he can't just step in that left tackle in place of Cornelius Lucas and Jerron Christian. So we're just going to end up with pressure coming from the outside all the time. Poor Alex Smith out there. But yeah, man, get well soon, Jerron Christian. We'll see how you look in the offseason, man. And that's the end of this Rico report, man. Just wanted to bring y'all that news, man. As always, please like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video, especially the Alex Smith situation and possibly being a quarterback for us 2021. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. As always, hit that bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release a video like this, every time I schedule a live stream, every time I start live streaming. And as always, man, I really appreciate all my supporters, everybody that donates to the channel. Shouts out to all of my Pro Bowl sponsors whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my one all-pro sponsor in Troy Cabrera. Big shouts out to all of y'all, man. I really appreciate it. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.